I got tired of using inferior quality vices, so I bought myself a good one. This is a Wilton 600S, has a six inch wide jaw, five and a half inch throat depth, opens to 10 inches, and it weighs more than I do. Needless to say, a vise like this deserves a really solid mounting point in the shop. So this massive plate of steel, we've had it in the shop for a long time. It's a 58 inch diameter piece of three quarter inch plate. It's not quite flat, but it weighs 565 pounds, and I think that'll make a nice anchor for the vise. And it'll make a nice table too. So big vices like this are commonly mounted on a pedestal in the middle of the room so that you can work all the way around them. And I can see that as a big advantage. However, in my opinion, that pedestal either has to be concreted into the floor, which isn't an option in my case, or it needs to have a really big, heavy base on it in order to be stable enough. And a big, heavy base is going to be terribly in the way. I'm going to constantly be kicking it. So that's why I like the idea of mounting it to a table, because as long as the table weighs quite a bit, it has such a large stance with the legs five feet apart or so, that it's really stable. Of course, mounting a vise on a round table isn't going to work very well, because I'll constantly be running into the table here and here. There's no such thing as mounting it on the corner. So what I'm going to do is move the vise out and mount it on a frame extension that holds it about here. And that way I'm able to leverage the mass and the stability of this table while still being able to work on three sides of the vise. Okay, let's get started on the build. The first step is going to be to make an octagonal frame that will go under the table. This will be made out of two by four inch square tube standing on edge. And then onto the bottom of that, I'll weld on four legs. Those will be made out of four inch square tube. So to make an octagon, we need a 22 and a half degree angle. And luckily the bandsaw comes with a handy scale we can use for that. Yeah, I think it'd be better if I use a precision protractor maybe. If you're in the market for a bandsaw, try to find one with the swivel head. That way you don't have to turn the entire machine like this for angle cuts. For every section of the octagon, I can slide it forward, I think it's 19 and 7 8 inch, and flip it over to reverse the angle. By the way, this is 3 16 wall tube, if you were curious. The octagon measures 48 inches to the outside. So this bandsaw is really good at making super crooked cuts, so I'm going to have to grind that back out. And for that, I'll use my belt grinder. I have my adjustable table set to 22 and a half degrees, and after I get it exactly 22 and a half in that direction, I can switch to my 90 degree table and then hold the tube upright to get it square that way. And now that those all fit nicely, I can use the belt grinder again to chamfer the edges to get ready to weld this together. So I've been trying for a while to get this octagon squared up using a tape measure and a square and this protractor, and I have not been able to get it even close. So per my design, this octagon was going to have an X through the middle of it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make the X now, and that way I'll be able to reference the octagon off of that, and that should make it quite a bit easier. Also, this plate, as I mentioned earlier, is not flat. So welding this up on the plate wouldn't have been that great anyway. If I make the X first, I should be able to reference off of that and make the whole frame a little bit flatter. So one way I have the piece of four inch square tube running all the way across and then here and here, I'm gonna have pieces of two by four standing on edge. The vise is gonna be connected to this piece, so that's why it's kind of a bigger piece. I don't know, does that look strong enough or do you think it'll collapse when I start to use it? Maybe I should have overbuilt it a little bit. I'll start by welding this one and then when I put this one on, I'll use a straight edge across here to get it flat. And after the first tack weld, I check it with a square again to make sure that tack weld didn't warp it. 
And here I'm putting a shim under the one side to level off that joint so it's flat. Now I'm thinking if I just put these right across the ends, make them square and centered, that should put all of those in the right spot so I can just insert these and end up with an octagon. So you'll notice that for each one of these, I'm rotating it 90 degrees and doing the welding here on the same side. If there's any twist in this plate, that's going to cause this piece to end up out of parallel with that piece. And I want to make sure that all of them are out of parallel the same way, because then when I add the pieces in between here, that will sort of average that out, and on average it'll be flat. For getting these pieces positioned correctly, I marked the center point right here, and I also marked the center of the octagon right there. That way I can use my ruler to measure out how far this needs to be from the center, and I can also put a square against here to get it at a 45 degree angle. Oh yeah, it turns out that thing's heavy and I can't pick it up just by squeezing the tube. A clamp helps that. I had to tack on this little scrap because otherwise there's nowhere to put a ground clamp on this thing. The gap was pretty large on some of these corners so I had to just use a bunch of tack welds to fill it in. So after all that welding, I was expecting this to be warped out of flat by quite a ways, but I'm quite impressed. This is the worst spot there is where the straight edge doesn't touch in the middle, but if I press it down, so that is close. Anyways, we're ready to move on now and add the legs. The legs are going to be in these four positions and they'll be braced over to the X, which is kind of the reason to have the X there. So I got the four legs cut. Now I could either put these legs on the outside like these are, or I could put them on top of the frame, or should I say on the bottom of the frame like this one is. Now this I think is stronger. However, it's reducing the table's footprint and that'll make it more likely to tip over. So I have to decide. Oh right, I like to make things difficult for myself. So I'm gonna notch these out and put them half on and half off. Yeah. I had to stop it there because we're up to the line there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is cut the end of these legs off at 45 degrees and cap that. This piece of material right here against the table isn't doing very much good anyways because I'm not gonna weld it to the table this close to the edge. I might as well make more room for clamps under the table by getting rid of this little section. So if you're wondering why I didn't just cut this at an angle and use a plate to cap it, that's because I wanted this corner radius to follow around the corner. This is a little more work, but I think it'll look better. This will give me room for clamps to go anywhere. This should still be plenty strong, especially once I put a brace across to the X. You 
can hear the bandsaw in the background cutting out some two by four inch braces for some of the other legs. But for right now, I'm gonna make the brace for this leg out of this little piece. It's just gonna be a little tiny brace in the corner, but I think it'll add quite a bit of strength. So that leg gets just that little brace in the corner, and then this leg and this leg get a similar small brace, but then this leg gets a lot more bracing because it's the one that the vise is gonna mount on. So it's gonna have a large four x four brace going down to that tube. And then on each side will be this two x four brace going over to the octagon. That piece got too short to hold in the bandsaw, so I'll have to cut it using the angle grinder. Got all the angle braces cut. For this one, I actually ran out of two by four tubes, so I had to splice together some scraps. All of them are ready to weld in place now. The frame is up to about 300 pounds at this point and pretty difficult to manage. I got all of the welding done on the frame. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to stand this frame up and then I'll get started on the vice mount. Next up, I'm gonna make the vice mount that sticks out here. This is gonna be made from two pieces of two by four inch tube. They're gonna be notched around the leg and welded together like this. And notice they're gonna be a couple inches lower than the tabletop, um, which is fine because that vise is quite tall and I don't want it that high. I forgot to mention it, but there will be a plate on top of these, so the vise won't sit directly on the square tubes. It'll sit on a plate. This is just there to support that plate. Here I'm getting started drilling the holes where the bolts will go to mount the vise. If you're wondering why I drilled these holes so big, because I like to put bushings through rectangle tube to prevent the bolt from squashing the tube. In this particular case, it's probably not necessary because I'm not gonna tighten them very tight on that vise anyways, or I'll break the little cast iron feet off. But as a matter of principle, I just never put a bolt through rectangle tube without a bushing. So these are the right distance apart for the back feet on the vise. But if you look from the top, you can see that the front feet are a wider spacing than the back feet. So for the front feet, I'm gonna basically just notch the corner out of here and then weld the bushing right onto the edge. And instead of using pipe, I'm gonna bore a piece of solid to make a little better bushing for those. This plate caps the end and adds a little bit of strength. So obviously at this point it looks super flimsy, so we need to add a brace in here. And that's gonna be exactly the same as this brace, so they'll be symmetrical. So after putting a straight edge on here like this and measuring the gap, 
I found that it was a little bit out of parallel with the surface that the table will mount to. So I used this clamp to pull that into square. And while the clamp is holding that, I'll weld the angle brace in. This isn't quite wide enough to mount the vise on, so I'm gonna weld down this plate. Rather than just leaving this as a simple rectangle, I'm actually gonna profile the outside to approximately the same shape as the base on the vise. I don't think it's necessary to cut this exact shape out, so I'm gonna connect this point with this point and just make that a straight line. And then here on the front, where this actually sticks out further than the feet, I'll connect it like this. All right, the frame is all finished up. I got these corners and these welds all ground flush, so the top of the frame should be perfectly flat. Now I'm gonna flip this over on top of the plate. I'll probably clean up the plate a little bit first and weld it on. I'm gonna use this clamp to squeeze the table up to the bottom of the frame to close any gaps that there might be. And I'm just gonna weld this on at eight points. So I'm gonna weld on each of the corners and also on each of these sections. The reason I'm keeping the welds to a minimum is to prevent warping this three quarter inch plate any more than I need to. And I'm just gonna weld probably about an inch long bead on each of those. Great news, I went all the way around with this piece of paper and I can't make it go under the octagon anywhere, and I also can't make it go under the X out here, which means the tabletop is completely tight against the frame all the way around. I should have said this earlier, but the way the plate was sitting here, it was bowed like this. So I put the big four x four tube right down the middle of that bow, and then by going all the way around the outside and clamping it tight, that automatically made it tight in the middle. I'm making some feet to put at the base of the legs, where feet usually go. I chamfered both of these parts so that they can be welded together and then ground flush. So this table isn't exactly completely done yet, but to be honest, I am kind of burnt out on this project. I've been working on it for weeks and I'm going to go ahead and flip it right side up now, mount the vise on it and It'll be done for now. I still need to make a way to move it using the pellet jack, but I'll deal with that later. And I'll paint it later. I'm not 100% sure how this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try to pick up from the vice mount with that crane, and hopefully from there I'll be able to flip it onto its feet. It seems to be at its balancing point now, so it's ready to come this way when I let it down. That was a pretty long journey, but I got it up to those two feet without dying. So now I have to somehow figure out how to roll it onto its four feet, also without dying. So I used a floor jack to pick it up to this point, and I'm using a clamp, squeezing the edge of the table, and using the crane to prevent it from falling all the way over. Well, would you look at that? It's right side up. And for now, I can move it around with this setup, just picking it up right in the middle. And it can't really fall over as long as the feet are only half inch off the ground. So now I'm gonna move the vise over here and mount it, finally.
So I've got the vise mounted. There's just a tiny gap here as planned. So the top of the jaws on this vise are at 45 and a quarter inch off the floor when the tabletop is at 36. This is a four foot long piece of square tube. I'm doing this just to show that this table does not tip over easily. Well, I think that's it for this one. I'm really happy with the vise mount. It's super rigid and I can work pretty much all the way around the vise to the point that I can hacksaw backwards from either side of the vise. Also, I've never experienced what it's like to have a vise that's just cantilevered out from a surface like this. There's room under here. I think I like it. Oh, and the, the table's nice too. I might have another video about painting it and building the pellet jack mobilizer, and I might not, I don't know. You'll see what it looks like painted in future videos though, as long as you stick around. Thanks for watching.